the stars with deep amaze stand fixed in steadfast gaze bending one way their precious influence the starry canopy above has always intrigued us with its brilliance and mystery the interplay of light and darkness arouses in us a sense of awe of wonder the millions and millions of stars stretching to infinity we do not have a clue of where all these began the glorious galaxies the bright planets the twinkling stars and the milky moon all seem to be heavenly spectators of a drama in which stars are born and die meteors enter and exit comets come blazing and make all things bright and beautiful The 23rd of July 1995 was just another busy day for Alan Hale and Thomas Bopp. As darkness spread over the evening sky, these two amateur astronomers were busy setting up their telescopes in two distant places. Alan Hale in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, and Thomas Bopp in Stanfield Arizona Stargazing always fascinated these two amateur astronomers A peep through the eyepiece of the telescope unveiled before them the vastness and immensity of space As the gaze shifted from one part of the sky to the other Hale reached the globular cluster of Sagittarius He suddenly noticed something unusually bright and blazing. At about the same time, Thomas Bopp's Dobsonian telescope spotted the very same bright object beyond the orbit of Jupiter. What was that glowing object? Was it a planet or was it a star? Neither of the two. It was a comet. A comet which had never been seen before. This new comet was christened Comet Hale-Bopp. According to convention, comets are named after the discoverer. Alan Hale and Thomas Bopp created history once again by being the first amateur astronomers to spot a comet beyond Jupiter's orbit. Soon astronomers all over began studying this heavenly body. 2 weeks of calculations revealed it to be at a distance of 7 astronomical units from the earth, which measures to 7 times the distance between the earth and the sun. From various observations of comet Hale-Bopp, astronomers computed its orbit. It has a very elongated elliptical orbit. and takes about 3000 years to go around the sun that means it revisits earth only once every about 3000 years comet hale-bopp is predicted to be one of the brightest comets ever seen it is expected to be a bright naked eye object from the middle of february to the 14th of april 1997 and it can be seen from any part of india comets constantly change their positions so to see comet hale-bopp one has to know its precise location from mid february 1997 it will be seen in the morning sky against the stars of aquila valpicula and cygnus 
Gradually, as it travels along its orbit, it will reach the evening sky by the third week of March. By late March, it will station itself near the constellation Andromeda above the northwestern horizon in the evening sky. It will continue to remain there and finally fade out in June. Comet Hale-Bopp will reach its brightest phase towards the end of March. It will position about 15 degrees to 20 degrees above the northwestern horizon. The comet will come to its perihelion on April 1, 1997. The best period to see this comet is up to the 14th of April before it begins to fade out. The word comet comes from the Greek word kometes, meaning hairy one, a description that fits the bright comets noticed by the ancients. The traditional definition of a comet is a fuzzy body with a hairy tail that makes a transient appearance in the sky. It is visualized as a hazy head with a spectacular tail. Many comets, however, do not develop tails. Comets travel around the Sun in a definite orbit. If the orbit is elliptical, then it is a periodic comet. That is, it comes back to our sky after a definite period of time. That period can be a few years to several million years. Cometary orbits can also be parabolic or hyperbolic. In that case, they are not periodic. They appear once and will never return. Just like their position, comets change their appearance too, which is determined by its proximity to the Sun. Comets, for that matter, any heavenly body, can have two distinct positions with respect to the Sun, aphelion and perihelion. The point when it is farthest from the Sun is the aphelion, while the one closest to the Sun is perihelion. At aphelion, a comet appears as a tiny frozen body containing gas and dust. At that point, the comet is at an extremely low temperature. As it advances towards the sun, solar radiation heats it up and vaporizes the frozen gas and dust. Thus the comet develops a transient, dusty atmosphere, so to say. It appears as a kind of halo around. This feature is known as the coma. At the center of the coma could be seen the nucleus, a distinct central point of light. It is extremely small, usually less than 16 kilometers in diameter, and happens to be the only permanent feature of a comet. The nucleus surrounded by the coma constitutes the head of the comet. After the head, it's the turn of the tail. To us, a comet is a heavenly body sporting a tail. It's the most spectacular feature. Surprisingly, all comets do not have tails. When a comet comes close to the sun, solar radiation usually blows the gas and dust of the coma, thus producing the tail which always points away from the sun. The gas jets are first directed towards the sun, but are progressively pushed back by the radiation pressure of sunlight. The tail reaches its maximum length and brightness at a comet's perihelion. The maximum length may reach about 250 million kilometers. As a comet moves away from the sun, the tail shrinks and finally dies out. What remains is the head with the nucleus. We know so little about comets that every visit of theirs raises a host of expectations. 
the comet which we saw recently was Comet Hyakutake. It was visible at the end of March 1996 only for four nights. Since it came with a short notice, a detailed study was not possible. But 10 years ago, in 1986, Halley's Comet generated tremendous excitement in the minds of people. Unfortunately, we could not see the comet. That was not a naked eye object. In 1986, Halley's Comet appeared in our sky, but we could not witness it with our naked eye. The reason? The configuration of the positions of the Sun, Earth and Halley's Comet was like this. Center, the Sun. This is the orbit of the earth and this is the orbit of Halley's Comet. Now, Halley's Comet is coming gradually nearer and nearer to the sun. When a comet comes closest to the sun, that position is known as the perihelion of a comet. Now, when it comes to, to the perihelion, it becomes most spectacular and that is the most magnificent phase of a comet for naked eye observation. In the year 1986, when Halley's comet came closest to the sun, that is at perihelion, most magnificent phase, our earth remained just on the opposite side of the sun and that is the reason that we could not witness Halley's Comet with our naked eye in the year 1986. Ten years prior to this, that is in 1976, Comet West was seen with the naked eye and those who had seen this bright comet wished to relive that experience with Comet Hale Pop in 1997. The heaven is perfect and incorruptible. That is what Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, believed way back in the 4th century BC, until one day when he saw a stray bright object with erratic behavior contrary to the harmonious motion of heavenly bodies. It was interpreted to be a forewarning of calamities. This is the famous painting, The Adoration of the Magi, located in the Arena Chapel in the town of Padua in Italy. This was the masterpiece by the famous Italian artist Giotto di Bondone, created in the year 1303 AD. In the old scriptures, we find that at the time of the birth of Jesus Christ, a beautiful bright star appeared in the sky of Bethlehem. But Giotto did not paint the star. In place, he painted this beautiful comet. In the year 1301, that is two years before that painting, Giotto witnessed a bright comet in the sky of Italy. He was very much impressed. Throughout the world, there is a superstition that co appearance of comets are omens of great calamity. But after witnessing that comet, 
Giotto declared, no, they are actually, there is no evil with the appearance of a comet. They appear in our sky according to the principles of nature and that is why in place of the that bright star of the legend, he painted a comet, the objective that anyone who will visit that chapel, he will find with that nativity painting that bright comet. It means that superstition will be wiped out from the minds of common people. There is another story that the appearance of a comet presaged the murder of Julius Caesar. William Shakespeare too made this association in his play Julius Caesar when he wrote, When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. In reality, Julius Caesar was only 14 years old when Halley's Comet appeared in 86 BC. But the comet has become associated with his death. Even after centuries, many strongly believe that comets are a bad omen. Once the mysteries are unveiled, the myths can be laid to rest. That is what science strives to do, unveil the unknown. Scientific study has revealed that comets have a rather clear cycle of life. It is believed that they originate from the Oort cloud, a permanent source of new comets. Oort cloud is a nebulous mass gravitationally bound to the solar system. It is believed to be the reservoir from which comets are diverted towards the sun by the action of passing stars. Life on Earth originated from a cometary bombardment. That is what many scientists believe. The molecules required to initiate prebiotic chemistry are found to be present in the comets. The basic gases like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen were predicted to be present in the comet. It was confirmed by space probing of Halley's Comet in 1986. Till the beginning of the 19th century, comets were discovered exclusively by visual means. Many discoveries are still made visually with moderate-sized telescopes by amateur astronomers. Professional astronomers nowadays identify new comets by taking photographs. Although comets can be present at any region of the sky, they are often discovered on the western or northwestern horizon after sunset or on the eastern and northeastern sky before sunrise. Comets are quite bright when close to the sun. Alan Hale and Thomas Bob kept all this in mind while scanning the sky. They spotted a comet for us. Everybody is awaiting comet Hale Bob. It is expected to enthrall us with its brilliance. Almost everything about Comet Hale Bob is charted out and it is revealing itself accordingly, but it is very difficult to predict comet behavior when it is near the sun. Sometimes they disintegrate. This is exactly what happened with Comet Kohutek in 1973. Just like Comet Hale Bob, everybody was expecting it to be a very bright comet. Chancing upon a comet while browsing the sky is just possible. Even you can get hold of a simple reflector or refractor telescope and start hunting for comets. A telescope of 5 inches to 6 inches lens diameter is good enough to start with. Who knows, you might just discover a comet and if you do, 
Don't forget to report it to the International Astronomical Union office in USA. That will help them to name the comet after the discoverer, who might just be you.